Imaginative Tales. Science fiction mixed with good girl art. It's a great combination. Uh, hi, I'm Gary Lavisi, and this time we're going to take a look at the uh, 50s Digest magazine, science fiction magazine, Imaginative Tales, which had a classic uh, pulp science fiction uh, action adventure stories um, by uh, some of the best names, biggest writers in science fiction at the time and today, a lot of classic names, and uh, cover art, like really beautiful, sexy, good girl art by uh, Macaulay and uh, also by Malcolm Smith. Malcolm Smith was the, uh, was the art director. And uh, the magazine started in, uh, with the first issue in uh, September 1954. It was uh, is a Greenleaf uh, publication, the first, uh, probably the first Greenleaf publication. It was edited by William Hamling, who uh, owned Greenleaf, and uh, Greenleaf later uh, went to the West Coast and started um, uh, a whole lot of uh, sleaze publications, Greenleaf books, Coronith books, and others. But uh, back in the 50s, when Hamling was starting out in Chicago, he, he uh, started with uh, Imaginative Tales. And um, we're going to take a look at them now. The first one is the, uh, is the September 1954 issue. Macaulay cover, and the second one is the November 1954 issue, number two, another Macaulay cover. Great, good girl art. And these two uh, begin the, uh, they have a, start the magazine off with Toffee. Toffee was a sexy girl who gets uh, in, uh, into all kinds of uh, science fictional, sexy, good girl art uh, situations. This is a, this was, the first one was a novel. The second one has two uh, toffee stories in it. Uh, they were from Fantastic Adventures uh, in, from the 40s, and they, these are reprints of, of uh, the toffee's tales. And then in the third issue, you have, um, third issue is uh, January 1950, 1950. Let me see. I can't see it. Some of the some of the printing, 1955. Some of the printing is very light. Um, it starts off with uh, stories by Robert Block and others, and these are just like really beautiful, cool magazines. There's um, there's at least 26 issues. They run till November 1958. Uh, I have 14 of them. So what I'm going to do is show you the first. The first few issues and, and uh, the 14 that I have, uh, unfortunately, I don't have a complete run. But they have great stories by uh, Ellison Block, Silverberg, Dick, uh, and, and, and other writers. Uh, William Hamling was the editor, and uh, they have terrific uh, artwork by H.W. Macaulay and uh, Malcolm Smith and others. So just to take a look at, here's the back cover, what they look like on the back. And inside, you have the first issue. It's it's a toffee novel, and it credits William Hamling, art director Malcolm Smith, Greenleaf Publishing, and it's the first issue, September '54, and. They have all these kind of sexy uh, drawings in them, sometimes uh, good girl art. And same, same drawing. And uh, number two is, uh, is two stories of Toffee. Toffee takes a trip and Toffee haunts a ghost. And uh, that's those two stories that are in there. And they're, they mix good girl art and a little bit of sleaze, you know, with science fiction. And this is Hamling was uh, would would later on kind of uh, uh, end up leaving uh, science fiction and just go right into sleaze. The third issue is um, is is where we uh, have stories by other writers. You have a Black Magic Holiday by uh, Robert Block, and you have. Uh, 
stories by uh, Raymond Banks and others. This is the third issue. This is the first three issues. Um, I don't have them all, so I'm just going to go uh, March 1955. This is issue number four. It has a story by Robert Block, Daniel F. Galui, Frank Robinson, and S.M. Tennyshaw. Uh, cover art by, again, by Macaulay. And it's one of his iconic covers. Uh, topless uh, naked woman holding a, a string with a ball, and the ball is in her hair. Or, mermaid. Uh, yeah, the mermaid, and her hair, her hair and the ball uh, are uh, strategically located to cover her. Um, number five is uh, has a story by Robert Block um, and uh, other writers. Um, Harold Macaulay uh, again with the um, with the cover art. These, especially the first few ones, really had really sexy, cute covers, um, and they had nice drawings and nice artwork inside. Um, number well, the the July '55 issue. Um, has stories by Robert Block, Daniel Galui, and uh, other authors. Uh, another Harold Macaulay pan, uh, cover, and uh, one of the one of his uh, iconic covers of the uh, the girl being sprayed by the little uh, pink elephant. It's like uh, just a cute, uh, sexy image. On the inside, it has a uh, uh, author, uh, you know. Um, bio, and this time it's on Robert Block, who did a lot of stories uh, f for the magazine. A lot of them were reprints. I don't know if there's, if there's uh, on the inside. Okay, so on the inside, uh, Daniel F. Galui, his author profile. Uh, and then there's just uh, a sexy, uh, another mermaid cover for this mermaid issue. Um, somewhere around November 55, or maybe a little bit before that, uh, they used, they started using a, uh, two, two colors in the, uh, in the, in the issues. Um, and this one has, uh, stories by, uh, Raymond Palmer, who became the, who was the, uh, who, who was basically, uh, you know, uh, helping on the editorial side. Uh, a Philip K. Dick story, PSI Man, he Heal My Child. John Christopher, Raymond Banks, Robert Silverberry, Alan E. Norse, and um, front cover painting by, Lo by Lloyd Rogman, illustrating the Metal Emperor. Really nice, uh, violent robot attacking, uh, attacking or you know, fighting the knocking down a plane. It's the first one that looked like science fiction. Yeah, it's the first one that looks like science fiction, actually. Uh, and inside is a, uh, of course, the contents is a Philip K. Dick story here. And, of course, Raymond A. Palmer, uh, author profile. And uh, what I wanted to show was that you have two color in these issues now. Uh, it may have started an issue or two before this, but I don't have those issues. So this is the first issue I have with the, with the color. And then you see it's, this blue here. And then what's really nice is that they, you know, they, uh, they did these little spreads of color on the, uh, on the opening story. And then sometimes in the stories uh, later in the issue, uh, or sometimes it's just black and white. This is a Philip K. Dick story. Um, Raymond E. Banks. Uh, this is this is cool. This is a cool series. A March nineteen fifty six. Uh, Dwight V. Swain, uh, Raymond, Ch uh, Raymond Chandler, A. Bertrand Chandler, Ivar Jorgensen, who was probably a Robert Silverberg, Paul F. Fairman, and others. Uh, Malcolm Smith did the cover for this one. 
and uh, it's a nice one. And uh, the leadoff story by Dwight Swain again has the red two color artwork. And let's see if there's any others. There were some others that I noted as I was looking through them with, with color. Just to show you if, well, it's in the other issues. But definitely, they have it in the in the uh, in the other issues. Um, March, uh, May, 1956. Um, Ivar Jorgensen again, probably Silverberg, Milton Lesser, uh, Lloyd Rog Rogna did the uh, cover art for this one. Really nice, beautiful cover. And. Uh, Again, there's the two. Uh, Forrest Ackerman. Forrest Ackerman, uh, author profile. Forrest Ackerman did some uh, nonfiction uh, stuff about uh, science fiction fandom in some of these issues. So as they use the blue, and they use the, the red, the gateway to infinity. Again, black and white. They did use uh, the two color in, you know, in some of the other, other stories. So it's just, it's just nice. The back covers just have ads. Sometimes they, they different issues sometimes have different, different things. The January 57 issue. There's a cool kind of robot cover. Um, a lot of the a lot of the authors I don't recognize, but uh, they have Randall Garrett, Robert Moore Williams, Alexander Blade, who was um, Howard Brown, and Robert Silverberg, uh, Malcolm Smith, cover art. Really cool cover, really nice Malcolm Smith cover art. And uh, and this issue, it's uh, now you're seeing green leaf. 500 big glossy pictures. Uh, take a peek. That's Betty Brosner. And that's Betty Brosner, yes. Uh, use an advertisement for, uh, you know, this is what uh, the evolution of Greenleaf from science fiction uh, into uh, moving slowly into sleaze. Here's the lead off story. Stories. It's hard for me to read them upside down. They had, they had uh, jokes, uh, cartoons, in the in the issues. More cartoons. Some of the cartoons are pretty cool from those days. Science, science fiction marquee. Scientific. Si science film marquee. Yeah. yeah. So uh, on films, uh, this is probably by. Probably by uh, Ackerman. Probably by Ackerman. Let me see. He's talking about. Um, doesn't say, but I would. Look on the contents page. Yeah, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to look on the contents page. And it says scientific film marquee, and it doesn't say who it's by. Probably by Forrest Ackerman. Uh, the May 1957 issue, The Horde from Infinity by Dwight V. Swain, has a terrific cover of a sexy, uh, half-naked, or actually naked girl in a, in a see-through glass box, and uh, other stories by uh, Robert Silverberg, Robert Moore Williams, Randall Garrett, Covered by Lloyd Rognan. Again, he's a naked girl, but she's strategically being, uh, her nudity is strategically protected by the uh, uh, a 
electric magnetic uh, interference or uh, smoke or whatever it is that uh, protects her nudity from the prying eyes of the prospective male uh, reader, who was usually probably a teenager in those in, in, in 1957. And, and these, these again, these science fiction magazines were primarily read, as were most vintage paperbacks by my men, uh, young men who came back from the war and uh, who were looking for things to read that had uh, gotten them uh, interested in paperbacks from the uh, from the armed service editions and things like that. And here we have the two color. Here we have another ad for uh, pinups and movies. So we're getting again, uh, uh, Hamling is uh, moving Greenleaf into that area. Here's the Dwight V. Swain cover story with the, th these uh, two color, uh, you know, pieces of art on the, on the splash pages are really effective. And when you when you get to the story like that, it's like, wow, it's really, really quite nice. Uh, and, and they did it a few times on stories in the, in the, later in the issue too. Some of the issues, I can find them. Of course, when you look for things, you can never find them. But, uh, you can see this, they use a color cartoon. It's, it's kind of nice that they have, you know, color throughout this magazine. I mean, this is for The Last Killer. Um, this is for a magazine from 1957. Uh, it's expensive to, uh, to run it through again on, uh, with a separate color in the printing process. So they're really doing, a, they're trying to do something pretty nice here, pretty cool. Uh, the July 57 issue, World of Never Men by Edmund Hamilton, and, um... Is it Captain Future back? It's, uh, I don't think it's a Captain Future. I'll go look, though. No. It doesn't seem to be. Um, Edmund Hamilton did Captain Future series and was known as World Wrecker Hamilton because he had, uh, fantastic uh, space opera uh, battles and uh, space opera stories. Robert Moore Williams is also in this, and Randall Garrett, Ivor Jorgensen, who was probably Robert Silverberg, and then Robert Silverberg also. Uh, Malcolm Smith did the cover art. Uh, my copy is, it's got a little uh, stamp on it and a little bit of a a little bit of a writing on it, but it's still a cool, really nice, cool cover. The guy's being blasted through the chest. Here's the opening story, World of Never Men by Edmund Hamilton. story. Devil's World. Malcolm Smith did a lot of the interior. Here's one with um, some color. Malcolm Smith did a lot of the interior uh, illustrations. The Assassin by Robert Silverberg. Um, the November 1957 issue, The Ship from Infinity by Edmund Hamilton, also has Rog Phillips, uh, Alexander Blade, who was Howard Brown, Randall Garrett, Ivar Jorgensen, who's probably uh, Robert Silverberg, and um, Lloyd Rogman did the cover from The Ship from Infinity. There's a terrific astronaut cover. He's really cool. So, um, Macaulay, Rogman, and Malcolm Smith. Some really, really effective, great, pulpy science fiction covers for this Digest series. And Imaginative, Tale, Imaginative Tales is a really cool magazine. It's great stories by great writers. Maybe you can be sent away and become a crime de uh, for crime detection. You're under arrest. You get all kinds of ads. This is the Edmund Hamilton read-off story. 
the ship from Infinity. Typical Edmund Hamilton, giant spaceships battling out in space. Very Star Wars-ish, uh, except he was, you know, 50, 60 years ahead of Star Wars. So, you know, that's where Star Wars came from. If you want to, if you're a Star Wars fan and you didn't read Edmund Hamilton or even uh, John W. Campbell in the, in the 30s, you know, that's where Star Wars came from. And, of course, E.E. E. Doc Smith, the Lensman series. So, you know. That's, everything comes from something, and uh, it's another, another, uh, another color, the cartoon. They increased the size of the logo, too. Yeah, they did. There's logos, logos bigger. I guess to make it on the newsstands, which is a, it's actually a good idea. Uh, the May 1958 issue, uh, action-packed science fiction. Again, uh, William L. Hamling is the editor. Um, D. Bruce Berry did the uh, co cover painting. Um, Dwight Swain is in this, A. Bertrand Trandler, Rod Phillips, Robert Silverberg, and others. Um, here's that cover. Action-packed science fiction. Um, gravity versus space flight. They're doing a special feature, again with the large logo. And uh, here's the opening story. Giant Killer by Dwight V. Swain. Swain wrote a lot of pulp stuff, science fiction. He was a really a good writer who uh, always kept himself busy, churning out lots of uh, lots of good stuff. A. Bertram Chandler, the Australian writer who uh, broke into American pulps and uh, uh, digests and paperbacks. His John Grimes books later on would be uh, very popular. Um, another, another story. I don't think there's any more color. Oh, there is color. I mean, it's this one here. Oh, Robert Silverberg gets color, even in those days when he's when he was young and starting out. The Cosmic uh, Pen Club. Uh, where people would write in, pen pals. Let me just see, because you know, sometimes you never know who the, uh, who the uh, people would write in and they would put their, uh, their name and address, everything here, to, um, to uh, meet other science fiction fans. And sometimes you'd be surprised when you look at these magazines from the 40s and 50s, who's in them. Uh, I have uh, actually in this one there's nobody there's no names that I, re I recognize but very interesting that uh, in some of the uh, pulps and some of the digest magazines you actually see uh, early uh, Lynn Carter, Marion Zimmer Bradley, uh, Silverberg um, and uh, Seen Ackerman too. Ackerman, other people, all all like uh, young young writers, young writers trying to break into the uh, into the pulps and the magazines would write into these magazines and the earlier pulps uh, letters, and they would put their names and addresses so that they could contact other fans, and it was a way for uh, for people to to get together because people reading this stuff, it was like in those days it was kind of like uh, you're reading that kind of Book Rogers stuff, and it's you know. It's not really like, you know, not supposed to be, it's not really good stuff, you know. You got to read, you know, the classics. Ooh. Now now the thing is, these are the classics. Uh -huh. So see how things change. But Imaginative Tales is interesting because it's an early Greenleaf uh, publication, uh, which would morph into Greenleaf books years later on. William Hamling's, uh, uh, under his uh, editorship and guidance, and uh, they would become like one of the leading uh, sleaze publishers uh, and adult fiction publishers uh, in, in the country. And they would uh, 
with Earl Kemp and other uh, people, uh, Harlan Ellison uh, and other people who were uh, involved in various aspects with Greenleaf and with Hamling uh, and, and with these magazines, you would have, uh, you know, they changed the, the, the face of publishing and Greenleaf became a, a major, uh, major publisher and an important publisher even today and very, very uh, collected. But this was the early days of Greenleaf, starting in Chicago with Imaginative Tales. They also had another magazine called Imagination. Imagination was interesting because, uh, and we may get to that at some point, uh, the first two issues were published by another publishing company. And then that publisher uh, either sold it or just gave it up. And then Greenleaf took over and uh, Hamling uh, continued publishing Imagination. So this, not to confuse these two magazines, but I just want to let you know about Imagination, uh, which is uh, a separate uh, uh, Greenleaf uh, science fiction digest. But Imaginative Tales was, uh, I believe, the first one. And uh, it ran about 26 issues to November 1958. And um, unfortunately, I only have 14 of them. <laughs> And uh, I was only able to show you the 14, but I, I hope you enjoyed them. I hope you enjoyed this look at uh, this early science fiction digest series, uh, the good girl art and the, uh, uh, the uh, fantastic images and spaceships and uh, naked women and all the stuff that went with, uh, with this early science fiction stuff. And uh, it's cool stuff. It's a lot of fun. And I love it. I think it's just great fun and it's fun to collect. And it's actually some good stuff to read. So uh, anyway, I just uh, want to thank you for looking. Hope you, if you enjoyed this, give us a thumbs up and a like. Subscribe and tell your uh, friends and uh, people that are interested in this stuff about the, this YouTube channel. And, uh, you know, let them take a look. And uh, see you again next time. Thanks a lot.